listening to the Heartland Author Podcast. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For today's episode, I had the honor of interviewing Mark Ryle. Mark is a retired economics instructor, triathlon athlete and coach, and the author of two books, the science fiction book Age Decoded and the sports nonfiction book Run Daughter, Run Father. I'm here here with Mark Ryle, Ryle, who is the author author of of the science science fiction fiction book book Age Decoded Decoded and the nonfiction book book Run Daughter, Daughter, Run Father. Father. Mark, welcome Welcome to the Heartland Heartland Author Author Podcast. Podcast. Thank you, Aaron, and I'm really thrilled to be on uh, on your podcast. Thanks for having me aboard. Feel free to introduce introduce yourself yourself to our listeners. listeners. Sure. Uh, Well, I'm from uh, just outside of Toronto, Canada. I um, I'm recently retired from teaching. Uh, I spent most of my life as uh, working as an educator, and um, I taught a lot of uh, math, economics, and I coached uh, track and field and cross country running. So that's sort of my work background. I uh, I, I I would uh, I add that if you had asked me ten, twenty, or even thirty years ago, would you be writing books? Uh, would you be a writer? I would have said, you're absolutely crazy. I'm not that type. So uh, let me just put that into. Yeah, English, English was my was uh, worst subject, subject in high school, school believe, believe it or not. Believe not. My, favorite not. Favorite my favorite subject, subject was, math. was math. Likewise. Yeah. Now, without without spoiling spoiling too much of your book, book, what is your book, book Age Decoded, about? Yeah, Age Decoded is a speculative science fiction. That means it uh, it seriously looks into the future. It's not, I'm not trying to investigate things like aliens or fantasy or uh, other planets and things like that. I'm more sticking to the Earth and trying to project where we will be in the next couple of centuries. And I focused on um, the aspect of uh, genetic engineering because I think that is a uh, tsunami about to hit us. It's a new technology, genetic engineering, CRISPR technology, whatever, that is uh, going to have fundamental effect on on humans, on humanity, on what it means to be human. And so my focus in um, age decoded is on the impact of um, genetic engineering on humanity. Now we've already we've had, already uh, had uh, some, uh, some uh, genetic, genetic engineering, engineering like genetically, like genetically modified, genetically modified crops, crops and stuff and like stuff that like in that real life, life, life but, uh, but uh, genetic, engineering genetic engineering is going to be a big, big thing, thing in the coming, in the coming decades. decades. Yeah and you're quite right we have been genetically engineering uh, species uh, Crops are a good example. Even selective breeding of um, <clears throat> of uh, uh, animals is, you know, you're sort of you're 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 genetically altering the gene pool there, and 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 so you know we've done a lot of that. But um, you're right. The next ten years, even now, it's just it's starting to take off. Uh, there will be more genetic engineering of humans and. Uh, that's fascinating. It should be fascinating to everybody. Now, your now book your is book about is a about fictional a example, example of genetic, of genetic engineering, engineering being used to jeopardize, to jeopardize human, human rights, rights and, democracy. and democracy. Are there real-life real ways, ways that genetic, that genetic engineering, engineering could, be could be used by governments, by governments around, around the world to jeopardize, to jeopardize the rights, the of, their rights of their citizens? Yeah, so, I mean, every sci-fi has to have its... Uh, unscrupulous uh, actors and uh, scandals so that is uh, that's part of mine uh, I, I should say uh, to, to you and to your listeners I'm more of an optimist generally I do feel like genetic engineering will have many many positive um, effects uh, on, on people's health uh, for example diseases such as cystic fibrosis uh, sickle cell anemia Alzheimer's they're already looking at uh, curing those using uh, CRISPR techniques, but yeah, in my book, they use a uh, a psychological adjustment. Uh, so genetic engineering can also affect people's psycho- psychology, uh, and uh, they do that um, while at the same time trying to stop people f- 
from aging. So people want to stop aging and they uh, even reverse their aging, older people. So they go for that technology, but unknown to them, there's also a psychological adjustment that happens, which uh, I, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, th that's possible too through genetic engineering. Yeah, there, yeah there's, there, a there's a potential, benefits, a potential benefits, of benefits of genetic engineering, engineering and then there and then could be there some could be really some bad really drawbacks, drawbacks that we might that we not might know not about know yet. About yet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's that's the worry with uh, Aaron with all new technologies. I mean, I'm I'm living in Ontario, Canada, where we have um, nuclear technology. We have, I think, if I count them, uh, uh, up to eight or nine nuclear reactors so most of our power is coming from nuclear um, now there are some issues with nuclear but the fact is the electricity we generate added to the hydro we have very strong hydropower so hydro and nuclear provide so much of our power that we're very very green our, 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 our carbon footprint is and that's our carbon footprint is very low so that's that's a positive right but um Technology, uh, information technology, another one where maybe we can talk about that. Uh, look, look at some of the, uh, the, the ups and downs of that. Um, but like I said, generally I'm an optimist. But um, genetic engineering can be used, uh, could be used to yeah, do some very nefarious uh, things. Now, without, now, without spoiling, spoiling too much of your other book, what is your book, Run, Run, Daughter, Run, Run, Father, Run about? Father about? Yeah, so Run, Daughter, Run, Father, um, at first glance, it seems quite different. It's nonfiction. It's a uh, more of a biographical account of my daughter, Stephanie, and I doing a lot of uh, distance running uh, together, training, and also racing, and then me coaching her, especially when she was younger. She started running when she was only seven years old, and I had to just get off the couch and join her because uh, you can't let a seven-year-old run around the city on her own. So she had this innate desire to run, and I, she actually was a very positive influence on me because I became less uh, less sedentary and, and got into running myself and then also became a coach, and uh, now I'm doing triathlons, and I'm, and I'm a very serious triathlete. So uh, that story uh, spans about 20 years, and uh, it's, it's a bit of a training manual in a sense that there's a lot of uh, exercise science uh, training tips and advice in there, but also lots of good stories, funny stories, uh, great stories, lessons learned about my daughter and I uh, in the distance running area in, in that book. So it seems like a very different book, nonfiction, uh, sports book, but um, the uh, maybe we can talk about the connection between the two, which I didn't even realize till after I'd written the second book. Now, what, what is the, what interesting, is the interesting connection, connection between, between your science, science fiction, fiction book and book your nonfiction non book about book triathlon? About triathlon? Yeah, so I, I, I could tell a story uh, representing Canada in the World Triathlon Championship for my age group. I was in Switzerland. Uh, a, a few, in 2019 <clears throat> and um, I was having a discussion with some of my fellow competitors we're all in the 60 to 65 year old age group and the ones who were uh, in this in the lower end of that age group let's say 60 61 year olds felt like they uh, compared to the ones who were 64 65 there was a big difference and I thought, whoa, that's odd, because I'm 60, 61. Yeah, and the ones who are 64, 65 said to us younger ones that um, you have a huge advantage. You're four years younger. And I'm thinking, well, can you really tell, like 64, 61, 60, 65, can you tell, can you, are you that fine-tuned an athlete? You can tell the difference in, in, in a few years. And uh, so they could. And uh, I did some research on it, and I uh, discovered that... Um, you do lose about 1% of your aerobic capacity, which is a very important measure, your maximum oxygen uptake, whatever you want to call it, uh, per year at that age. So over four years, going from 61 to 65, say, you're going to lose 4%, which is a huge um, difference uh, between those two athletes. So I began to think about aging, um, mortality, the march towards death, the inevitable march towards death, that's what mortality is, 
And um, it really struck me, even from just pure physiology and running and triathloning, that it's there and it's unavoidable and it's happening to me. And, and uh, so uh, and I, then I did some research into it and I, I started uh, first with the science fiction novel um, because there's serious research on stopping and reversing aging right now using genetics. And then um, even writing this novel about my daughter and I, I, I've been experiencing that myself uh, as an age group competitor, as an older runner. I'm, I'm thankful that I started running when I was middle aged and, and even now older, still running. But I do feel like I am getting older and getting slower, even though I'm training as much as possible. So the, the connection between the books is the, um, I would say first and foremost, the acceptance of mortality um, and also trying to get the most out of your out of your mortal life. Those are the two things. Also, a third thing that comes up in both books is the uh, intergenerational um, bonding or love that occurs between, say, grandfather, daughter, father, daughter, son, etc. That intergenerational connection, um, which is, of course, part of life and death itself. Now, are now, the World, are the age, world group age Group Championships, championships in, triathlon, in triathlon, Olympic, Olympic distance, distance, Ironman, Ironman distance, distance, or some, or other, some distance? other distance? They use the uh, Olympic distance, uh, which is a lot more sane than uh, I'm, I'm thanking, thanking myself that they do not use the, um, the Ironman. The, Ar the Ironman is the full... Um, distance I won't go through the actual distance but you're out there for about 12 hours or more um, I mean the best in the world can do it in eight or nine hours but it's it's a full it's day it's like of a few like miles of an open of water <coughs> swim <coughs> the stage of the Tour de France followed by a marathon, yeah. marathon is how I would uh, yeah yeah that, that's a good way of saying it and and you're right and at the end it's a full marathon I, I could not handle that uh, I've done a half try uh, Ironman and that that was enough for me just to get the taste of that. So we do the uh, um, the Olympic distance, which is much more seen. It's a one and mile also swim. Much more so television, much more television friendly. friendly. It is, yeah, and it's you're only out there for a couple hours, so you're not going to completely deplete yourself, or the sun's not going to go down, or <laughs> you're you're not going to die or anything. Uh, it's much more restricted. It's still a, it's still a tough event because you're out there, you're you're pushing hard for two hours. You're on the swim for about half an hour. And then the bike is about an hour, and then the 10K run at the end is about 40 minutes. So, yeah. Now, are both now, are of your both books self-published, self both of your both books of your traditionally, your traditionally published, published, or is one self-published self and the other and traditionally, the other traditionally published? published? So, they're both self-published, and um, that's one thing that I thought long and hard of. I did approach a few publishers a few years ago with the idea of the book and I didn't get much of a reaction so I thought things have changed now you can do um, self-publishing much much easier you can do podcasts now to like I am today to talk about your book um, and you can um, you know you, you can basically control the, your content your book and the timing of the release and all that thing much better self-publishing so I know there's advantages to publishing too and, and uh, we can talk about that but I was quite happy to self-publish both books and um, I've been very pleased with the uh, provider I think it's, it's, you know, some of your listeners may have heard of draft to digital they just bought smash words so that they're the one and the same now draft to digital smash words and they're they, they provide very good service for a platform for self-publishing. Yeah, they're yeah, a self-publishing self distributor where you can upload, you can like, upload a like a manuscript, a cover, and other metadata, and, uh, and uh, self-publish self a book, a that, book way. that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, they will not promote your book. You that you have to, you know, do whatever you can. Social media, podcasting, uh, they will not promote it. But they provide a very good distribution, like Draft the Digital has uh, put my book on the for on the Amazon retailer platform a, uh, Apple Smashwords uh, a bunch of European ones some of them I haven't even heard of um, but uh, Indigo Kobo so they, they provide a quite a nice platform uh, for 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 retail 
Now, do you now, do plan you on, plan or, are on or are you considering writing more writing books more in the future? Books in the future? Yes, I am. So I'm going to do another science fiction. I don't think it's going to be a sequel, though. Um, I think it's going to be, and I don't think it's going to involve genetic engineering. It's going to involve information technology. Um, and it will be another um, dystopian uh, science fiction. Now, if you now, have you a have typical a writing routine, routine, what is that like? I'm sort of scattered, so I'm not I'm not plodding along with a rigid format. You know, I don't get up at eight in the morning and start writing till three hours before noon or whatever. Right, and I don't I don't have any set method of writing. So, for example, I don't write linearly, uh, chapter by chapter. In fact, I don't even necessarily use an outline. Although I did start using outline more for my second book, um, so I'm pretty. I'm hard to pin down on that method, uh, but I, I, I just sort of, when I get the energy and I get motivated, I just start, I'll write. I do do a lot of writing at night, so after 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, 1, 2 in the morning. I'll, uh, although I must admit, sometimes I wake up and read what I wrote and it doesn't look as good as what I thought it was when I went to bed. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, but I'm, uh, I do enjoy the process. I'm not a, but I'm definitely not a steady writer. I'm, I'm uh fits and starts, ups and downs, and um, I think I like it that way, though. It feels creative. Now, what was now, it what like was it to be like an to economics, be an economics teacher, teacher for many, for many years? I loved it because I started by teaching math, mainly, but then I, I, I sort of got it, I, after about 10 years of that, I got a little bit bored with just thinking, you know, using one side of my brain, thinking one way, whereas economics... I don't unless you really know it. People may not realize this. It's very subjective. It's very debatable. It's very political. Uh, it's um, it's not just uh, you know you throw something to the form and here's the exact answer for everybody to uh, admire. It's um, it does have graphs and it does have some numbers and supply and demand curves and things like that. But I really enjoyed the discussion around the subjectivity uh, of the uh, of the models that are being used and the projections that are made and um, so the kids really liked it too because it's an elective subject and they could they, a lot of them were going into business or commerce or, or economics and they um, they enjoyed uh, learning about money and, and the world and uh, markets and uh, market failures and uh, market distortions and the, so it was fascinating for me I had no training in economics so that was not my background but uh, I learned it um, while I was teaching it, there was no teacher at our school who wanted to teach that, and they asked me, and I said, why are you asking me? And they said, I don't know, you took one course in economics at university. And I said, yeah, but that was my least favorite course. And uh, so the, anyway, I ended up teaching, and I loved it. Well, I hope none well, of your none students, students turned, turned out to be out like to Sam like Bankman like III, who lost, lost a bunch of money. Bunch of money. And ended yeah, up, I, uh, ended up uh, in uh, uh, prison uh, awaiting prison trial in the trial Bahamas. In the Bahamas. Yeah, those cases just seem to keep coming forward, don't they? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, we, we did study some of those uh, situations, and uh, uh, it just seems to come around uh, that there is, uh, like any aspect of life, there's some um, bad actors and corruption and whatnot. But uh, generally speaking, uh, it was it was fun teaching it. The, the kids really liked the current events like that, they like they like the um, trying to relate it to the to the theories, and uh, I really enjoyed that part of my teaching. Well, Mark, well, Mark uh, you, were you, were you were a wonderful guest for this, guest podcast, for this podcast, podcast, but I'm out of, questions, out of questions. So I thank so you for appearing on the Heartland Author, Author podcast. podcast. Uh, thank you very much, Aaron, for your hospitality, and keep up the great work uh, with the Heartland Author, and I wish you all the best in the future. It's always great to interview authors who have written both fiction and nonfiction works, and Mark was a wonderful guest for this podcast. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to write your imagination. Bye for now. You can learn more about me and my book writing projects at Camp Aaron Apollo. 
www.witsite.com forward slash author AAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at author AAC and on Instagram at AAC Scribe. Copyright 2022, Aaron Apollo Camp, all rights reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this podcast episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.